the Snyderverse isn't going to Netflix. Why are you calling me? I'm right. Am I wrong? No, you're not wrong. Am I wrong? You're not wrong, Walter. You're just an asshole. Okay, then. So for those of you who aren't in the know, a lot of things have been happening at DC over the last few months. By the way, I'm sick, so y'all just gotta bear with me. First, Henry Cavill was back as Superman, then James Gunn became the head of DC Studios, then Henry Cavill was fired as Superman again, and now there's a new slate of DC movies that are planned for the future. And things are basically gonna be rebooted going forward after Shazam, Aquaman 2, and The Flash. And of course, who knows what's happening with Wonder Woman 3. But anyway, one thing that is basically for certain is that DC is gonna have a whole new universe under James Gunn and Peter Safran, and they're probably just gonna ignore the current DCEU. It's confirmed that James Gunn is writing a new Superman movie that won't be starring Henry Cavill. The only things that we know that aren't going to get touched are Matt Reeves' Batman projects and a Joker 2 movie. So of course seeing all this, it shouldn't come as a surprise that all the sequels that Zack Snyder's Justice League set up, mainly Justice League Part 2 and 3, aren't going to be followed up on. It seems pretty clear that DC and Warner Bros. Discovery want to follow the roadmap that James Gunn and Peter Safran are setting up, and with them rebooting Superman and firing Henry Cavill again, I think it's a clear indication that the Snyderverse isn't on the menu. So this has sparked a new campaign among Snyder fans, and that's trying to get Netflix to pick up the rights to finish Snyder's movies, and have them be the ones to continue the Snyderverse. What the fuck? Yeah, so I'm a huge Snyder fan, as you all know. I followed the movie for years, saw the stunts that fans did to get Warner Bros. attention, and I'm telling you right now, that ain't gonna happen. I mean, I see in theory why some people would think that it's possible. Snyder's doing a lot of work over at Netflix, and is really friendly with them, and clearly has a much better relationship with them than he did with Warner Bros. So, you know, just have Netflix talk to Warner Bros. to work out a deal to purchase the rights to the characters so they can make a few movies. Well, it's actually more like leasing the characters out, you know, basically paying to use them. Warner Bros. is not gonna outright sell the rights to the characters, obviously. But if you stop and think about it, it doesn't make any sense for Warner Bros. to actually do that. If they had any interest in continuing it, they would just put it on their own streaming service. You know, HBO Max. It doesn't make sense to basically lease out your characters to a competitor, let alone one of the biggest properties in DC. You know, the Justice League, that has three of DC's biggest heroes in it, Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman. I don't see them handing over characters that big to anyone, even if it's temporarily. I know some people point to Daredevil, The Punisher, and the other Marvel shows that were on Netflix, but a few things. Those shows weren't made by Netflix, they were made by Marvel Television and ABC Studios, and they were put on Netflix because Disney didn't have their own streaming service yet. But then leading up to the release of Disney+, Plus, all those shows were cancelled, and now all these shows are on Disney+, Plus with a new Daredevil show in the works. So given the option, a company as big as Warner Brothers would do the same thing Disney did. They would just keep it away from the competing platforms and keep it on their own service. Though a more recent example people point to is The Sandman Show, except that's also a little bit different. Basically, Netflix just kind of funded the project and paid $15 million per episode, with the total budget being around $165 million for the whole show. Show. And from what I can gather, it was basically kind of like a bidding war between all the streaming services to see who will actually get the rights to the show. And basically, they would pay Warner Brothers to actually make it. So they essentially paid like 165 million plus to be able to make the Sandman show. So that's why there's a Sandman show on Netflix despite it being a DC owned property. Although, let's be real, the Sandman isn't nearly as popular as Batman, Superman, or Wonder Woman, or the Justice League branding in general. So imagine how much money it would cost to do the same thing with DC's three biggest heroes. You're easily looking at like four or five times that amount for the Justice League. Not to mention how much more expensive those movies are going to have to be to be on the same scale as before. They're going to have to dump another two to three hundred million dollars per movie. That's roughly what it costs for Man of Steel, BVS, and Justice League each. And that's basically above the cap when it comes to Netflix movie budgets. Their most expensive movies were Grey Man and Red Notice. And financially, they've been on a downturn in recent years, with them actively losing subscribers. So I don't really think they'll be able to foot the bill on this one. But let's say that Netflix was up to and they had the funding. Let's say they actually tried to talk to Warner Bros. to try to get this thing going. Probably the most important thing that would stop them from even considering that deal is that there's a reboot in the near future, and a new Superman movie is in the works that won't star Henry Cavill, so I'm certain that DC won't compete with themselves by having a universe over on a competitor's platform, with characters that they're probably going to use in the future for their new universe. So why would they compete with themselves, especially since they seem more than ready to move on from it all? And I know what you're thinking because I'm thinking it too. Since they already have a Batman in his own universe, and a Joker in his own universe, separate from the current DCEU, what's the harm in having the Snyderverse continue alongside the new DC universe? Universe they have planned? The answer is simple. They don't want to. It's been clear for a while now that they don't want to support this universe, and with them hiring and firing Henry Cavill again, they're really just going to go the reboot route and start fresh apparently. So yeah, point blank, they don't want to continue it. And I guess the last thing I'll mention is that fans are saying that this is similar to the release of Snyder Cut movement, with fans wanting Warner Bros. to release Snyder's movie, and that eventually did happen. The big difference here is that Warner Bros. themselves released the movie. They already owned it, and they put it on their own streaming service. They didn't lease it off to a different company and let them release it. They kept it all in-house, so it's not exactly the same. Also, the movie was basically 
nicely done. They just had to finish some VFX. The only thing that's similar about these situations is that there are fans who want to see a follow-up to Snyder's movie, so they'll keep pushing for it. And I admire it, but I'm gonna be real. This scenario just doesn't seem possible. I really don't see Warner Brothers playing out a new universe under James Gunn, but then at the same time actually keep the Snyderverse alive. Something they've been like ignoring and pushing away from for years. It doesn't make that much sense. It's clear they want to move away from it. And I'm just gonna throw this out there. Do you really want to try to let Netflix handle projects this big? Netflix shows and movies are like hit or miss these days, so who knows how it'll actually turn out. Oh, to be fair, Warner Brothers aren't doing much better, I guess. If it's something that fans want to keep pushing for, I'm not gonna stop them. But I'm not gonna lie and say I think it has a very high possibility. There are dates already picked out for when big hashtag events are gonna happen. I've also seen a screenshot of Snyder liking a post suggesting the idea for it to go to Netflix, so he seems aware of it at least. So I guess we're gonna have to see what happens. But I'm more so looking forward to Snyder's new work like Rebel Moon Part 1 and 2 and the Army of the Dead sequel. He's got a lot cooking over there in Netflix, so pretty soon we're gonna be eating good. But that's all I really have to say. I don't think it'll be going to Netflix anytime soon. I just don't see Warner Brothers doing that. But why don't you go ahead, leave a comment, let me know what you think about this whole situation. Do you think Netflix and Warner Brothers would even consider doing something like this? Leave a comment, let me know. And of course, if you enjoyed the video, go and drop a like on it. And I'll give a nice big shout out to the channel members. You guys have supplied the cold medicine that's been keeping me alive. If you're interested in becoming a channel member, click the join button down below and check out the perks. If they interest you, consider joining. Or not, it don't matter. None of this matters. See, that's some racist shit. Am I right? But you're right. <laughs>